Hi there, this is John Drew on behalf of Elevated Planet and the Twiglet Zone. Fantastical Tales, accompanied by a savoury snack. So, a fantastical tale accompanied by a savoury snack. I'm amazed by what I've learned over the last four years. I've learned certainly that we are not the human being, that we are immortal spirits having a human experience. And I love that because when I realised that it was so liberating, it kind of takes the pressure off. And also, one of the things I've come to realise is that how conditioned uh, we are in life, how we've taken on board this misaligned programming, deliberately misaligned, uh, because it's, it's designed to keep us small. It's designed so that we don't realize our own power. But the age is beckoning now when it is all going to come back to us. We know the next three years, or at least I know the next three years, as do quite a few others. The next three years is going to be very tumultuous. There's going to be a lot of grief energy out there. And I believe a lot of the grief energy comes back to the fact that people are going to have to, will be grieving for the beliefs that they had for many decades were going to have to be given up because they're going to realize that everything is changing. Part of it could be, and I, and I don't know, the extraterrestrials may be a little bit later in the decade, but certainly the fact that the the extraterrestrials are amongst us and have been since the dawn of creation you know here's the funny thing we we think that they're going to come over and take over the planet well the planet has always been theirs they are the reason we are here in the first place uh, they have been nurturing us throughout and they exist in different dimensions so we don't see them we we have to appreciate we do have a very narrow range of senses we have like a, a, our range of vision is like that narrow relative to a huge perspective than what you know hearing exactly the same the sense of smell you know all the, we know that the ex, uh, senses exist beyond our range so how why would it be unbelievable that an entire civilization or civilizations more to the point exist beyond our narrow range of senses it makes sense and also this past life thing you know we we've all this lived countless past lives who I don't you know I mean obviously it varies from individual to individual and we're here on this planet now for a reason because of the change that is about to take place but also you know we haven't just been living in this one body that's the point right the past lives are all about past experiences where you've gone through life uh, playing a different role you may have been a man you may have been a woman you may have been rich you may have been poor you may have been a murderer, you may have been murdered, you may have been to war. Um, you know, we've all been there, we've all done these things. Uh, we just don't remember it because how confusing would it be if you were born into this life with memories of a hundred past lives, for instance. I mean, that's going to be really confusing. And we don't. We come here with our mind cleared of all the debris, if you like, and experiences from the past. So all we're doing is living out this existence. And of course, the first thing we do is get this conditioning and programming, which tells us what our reality should be. And we, we go for it. We, we, we fall for it hook, line and sinker because it's part of our education. It's part of the way that our family believes things to be. Uh, and yet, when you look at different cultures around the world, we also see that their version of reality can differ quite significantly to ours. Does that mean that we are right and they're wrong? Or is it just a different version of reality? Now, my perspective on that, you know, I spent a lot of years working on an international basis, working with all sorts of different cultures. And I learned that 
I learned to respect all the, all the alternative versions of reality, and I didn't regard them as any less valid than my own. Now, pretty much every religion in the world believes in reincarnation as a basis for what they do. So, you know, there's nothing that fantastical about past lives. So there's a lot of written word on it. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of things, you know, I mean, I would defy anybody to prove it doesn't exist because it does. And not only that, you've not just been on this planet, you've been an extraterrestrial in all likelihood, you've been different energy forms. We just think of, you know, because of the fact that we're born into this body, then we believe that you have to have a physical body to actually be alive. And it's not the case at all, because for instance, when you die from this physical realm and you move over to the other side, your energy doesn't die. Your energy lives on. And in fact, it's liberated from the limitations of a physical body. Hence, when you go for a reading with a medium, a, a good medium, not, not a charlatan, but when you go for a, a reading with a real medium, these talented people were on this planet for a reason because they are the bridge between this physical realm and the non-physical realm in which they now exist. And it's absolutely, totally liberating because you're not held back by the constraints of a body, of gravity, of the ability to travel from, from one place to the next. You can go thousands of miles in a blink of an eye just by imagining where it is you're going to go to. And I think time is different. Like, And this is a really weird concept. I know a lot of people struggle with it, and you know I certainly do. But, but the fact is time only exists in this physical plane. It's something that we've constructed uh, because it helps us to get through this linear pathway that we, we are actually on. But in reality, when you're not in this physical realm, time doesn't exist in the same way at all. Now that takes some thinking about, and I have to confess it takes a lot of thinking about, but it's, it's a truth of the, of, the, of the world we live in. We believe everything has to be done through you know, our time frame, and the reality is that because everything happens simultaneously. How do you even imagine that? How can you even get your head around the fact that everything happens simultaneously? Which means also that time travel is also possible within this physical realm and has actually been practiced for many decades. We know that through things like the Philadelphia experiment in uh, America and countless other things that have gone on as well. We, we know that, for instance, that the anti-gravity, we've worked out how to do the anti-gravity thing with Muscovium, element 115. It's uh, something that has already been proven. We don't have it as a stable element. It only lasts uh, you know, a fraction of a second, but nevertheless, you can see how it actually works and that, that gravity can be conquered through the use of this. Hence, spaceships, the fact that they don't have propulsion the way that we do, uh, using fossil fuels and all uh, all the rest of it in order to propel yourself. They don't need any of that. You know, they just use the electromagnetic rivers of energy that flow throughout the universe uh, and indeed around this planet and food as well, right? So, I mean, we as physical beings, we consume food. Once you get to the extraterrestrial territory, usually they don't consume food. So, I mean, some of them might do, but most of them don't. Most of them can just absorb energy in different forms. And that energy could be energy, um, again, from that electromagnetic energy that uh, floods throughout the universe or around the planet. It could be energy from uh, light. Light energy is a big way in which they get their sustenance. It's an enormously powerful thing and they can go and have a light bath. If they're running low on energy, they can just go and have a light bath and that recharges them. They don't, and they, the, the thing is as well, they don't even need to sleep. The thing is that and in a, our physical form, we need to sleep because the physical form will get tired. The spirit doesn't get tired. Your spirit, when you sleep, and here's another interesting thing, when you sleep, your spirit, when you're in your deepest sleep, your spirit leaves your body and goes back to the higher realms. You will be with your metaphysical family on the other side, for one thing. Now, you don't consciously know this. I don't consciously realize this. But I do believe absolutely that it is happening. So when we come down into this incarnation, we have already pre-planned the major kind of reasons that we are here. And it may well be to repay karma from past lives, in which case we will have dramas to play out in this life based off what we've done in the past. So with that being the case, 
we have to be careful to withhold judgment. If somebody does something bad against you, it could be just them playing out their role within your karmic circumstances, meaning that they are clearing your karma from the past life. Because it is this thing whereby if you commit violence to one person, let's say, in one life and you come back again, then you want them to commit violence to you. It doesn't have to be violent. It can be something that's equivalent. It could be an emotional, psychological kind of pain. But either way, what you're trying to do is clear that karmic debt. So you have to be careful to withhold judgment because in past lives, you will have accumulated karma. Now, what I also understand is that the karma thing is actually less relevant going forward because the earth is shifting from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. It's already part of the way there. The vibrations are speeding up. Um, and what's it called now? The frequency. There's a frequency that, that, that the earth resonates at, has done for, for, for many, many years. And now they know it's speeding up. Over the last few decades, they've seen that time is speeding up. Again, you know, getting your head around some of these things is pretty challenging. But this is all just part of what is actually happening that right now. Now, for us to travel with the planet, as I've said before, it means that we have to be able to move our vibrational frequency from the third dimension to the fifth dimension, which means we have to have a higher frequency. You cannot get to the fifth dimension from a state of fear, stress, anger, violence. Not just that, but also judgment, judgment of others. Um, there are so many ways in which you can sink into that lower dense energy which is constantly promoted by the media which is why elevated planet is one of the things that we're doing is to turn the negative media on its head because it's important it's needed right now because when people actually start to focus more on the good things in life the fun things the things that make you laugh that make that make you glad to be alive they're the high frequency energies the things that bring you back to, to love, to laughter, to joy, to celebration of life. The life was always intended to be a celebration. So, so let's celebrate it. This is kind of what we're trying to get to. And not what we're trying to get to, but what we will get to. So the question is, do you want to be part of it? So this is all just within the twiglet zone. It all sounds fantastical. And there is so much more. Honestly, I could, I could do hour upon hour upon hour of twiglet zones and never run out of material. It'll all sound similarly fantastical. It'll sound similarly deluded to those not on this particular path, but that's okay. Because as I've said before, it's the job of myself, of Joe Lay, of the Elevated Planet team, but we're here to plant the seeds. We're here to plant the seeds that encourage you to, to, to maybe get spiritually curious. That's all. Just to say, okay, like, I want to step across this bridge and check out if this is deluded nonsense or whether it, there's something in it. You might do it by having a reading through one of our mediums, for instance. And maybe when you make a connection with the other side and you're actually convinced because you, you come back with information that nobody else would ever know, then you become convinced that, yes, the other side does exist. So then once you start to believe that, then it's like a house of cards comes crashing down because... Re much of our reality is, is built not even believing those things because then you start to think, OK, so if the physical, if the non-physical realm does exist, what else is the case? And this is what created my curiosity four years ago when I was stuck in my left brain westernized version of reality. And I was encouraged. This encouraged me to just explore and dig and dig and dig. And I've not stopped digging yet. And yet, you know, uh, I. It's amazing. You know, the Aborigines, the Aborigines celebrate death on the basis that the person concerned is leaving the dream time, which is this life, and going back to reality, which is the other side, the spirit world. I think the Aborigines have got it right, as have many of those that we regard as the, uh, like, let's call it ancient wisdom. Ancient wisdom is packed genuinely with wisdom shamanic wisdom you know all these kind of things but yeah my, you know honestly i find it incredible when i think about past civilizations on this planet the way that the earth was created in the first instance the way that evolution 
happened. Not the way that, the, not the Darwinian theory, but the way that it actually happened. And then you've got Lemuria and what happened to destroy Lemuria. And then Atlantis and what happened to destroy Atlantis. All these, you know, cataclysmic events. And the earth is just about to go into the next iteration. Except this time, the cataclysm is not going to happen the way that it has in the past, where effectively much of the earth is destroyed, nearly all life is lost. Um, this time around, it's a shift in dimension. Because planet earth has been badly destroyed by mankind. We've been so out of harmony with nature, certainly since nuclear testing started. There's been so much damage done by mankind that the earth as it was in the third dimension as it is in the third dimension it can no longer survive so there has to be a change now in the past it has been a cataclysm which has effectively wiped the population from the earth and then you're starting again this time around we're doing the dimensional shift from the third dimension to the fifth dimension and the question is can you align your emotional frequency and vibrations to the fifth dimension because to do it, you have to go into that place of love, of joy, of celebration of life, of just having fun with life, of compassion, of humility, of kindness, of respect, an understanding that we are part of a huge universe and multiverse that's out there that is so much bigger than mankind. Mankind is just simply almost an experiment created by extraterrestrials and the higher realms, you know, the God force, all those millions of years ago. This planet was designed originally as a, as a, as a utopia, as a garden of Eden. And then the meteor struck and brought bacteria and the experiment was spoiled, but they carried on anyway. They introduced mankind and gave us free will and the ability to, uh, you know, follow our own path without interference. And we've done it. And every time we've done it, we've destroyed ourselves and we're on the path to destroying ourselves again. So this time there is a realization that we have to be at a higher frequency and vibration in order to survive. Otherwise, we're just going to destroy ourselves time after time. So that's where we're heading. So are you going to be ready for the journey? If you just consider this to be deluded nonsense, then you are not yet ready for the journey. And there is no judgment intended on that because a, a large proportion of people out there on the planet are not ready for this yet. You will see it as deluded nonsense. And I have complete respect for that opinion because four years ago, I would have been right there with you. I would have said, no, deluded nonsense. This is reality over here. I've known it for decades. So what I'm saying is that we are on an amazing journey. Whether you realize it or not, we are heading somewhere very special, albeit some are heading somewhere special. Some people are heading somewhere not so special. Uh, third dimension or fifth dimension. That's the choice that awaits you. Or is this all just deluded nonsense? Either way, it is a fantastical tale accompanied by a savoury snack. And you might do it by having a medium, a re you might do it by having a medium, 